Hi there, my name's Colin and this is the Action Figure Resource video channel. The place for all your action figure news, reviews, tutorials and guides. Today I'm taking a look at Kenner's Batman Command Center, which was also known as Wayne's Manor playset, released in 1992. Don't forget to subscribe below, smash that like button, and click on the bell icon to be informed of my future videos. Also, don't forget to wait to the end of the video to download your free Batman Collector's Guide. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures. The Batcave Command Center, or Wayne's Manor playset, was only re released for a short period of time over the Christmas holidays in 1992. It is therefore extremely rare to find a mint packaged version of this variation. However, there were several different variations of this playset released over the time that Kenner held the license. And even Hasbro have released variations of this. To date, there are approximately six to seven different variations of this playset available. Originally, this playset was going to be released in the 1991 Dark Knight collection, but due to production problems and costs, it was held over until late 1992, and it was then only released over the holiday period and was withdrawn in early 1993. The playset came in a huge rectangular box for packaging and featured photos of the playset rather than the usual artist's impression used on previous packaging. The outside or front of the playset looked like the front of an old Gothic castle or mansion with loads of detail on the brickwork, windows and doors, right down to the door handles and an inscription of the Wayne family crest and a Wayne Manor inscription on a plaque on the brickwork. The roof was also extremely detailed with even the rivets holding the roof tiles in place. This section of the playset was made from a brown or tan coloured plastic rather than a grey stone collar, which detracts a little from the overall look and feel, but not a great deal. The playset opened up by unlatching a hook at the top on the reverse side of the playset to reveal three separate sections. Each had its own unique look, design and features. The first section, or the furthest from the front section, is the Batcave. This section featured Batman's computer console in the command section with three computer screens and a swivel chair. The detail on the moulding of the rocks here as with the brickwork on the front was excellent. This section also had a transformation chamber for Batman to change in. This worked by strapping your Bruce Wayne figure into the transformation chamber and then rotating it using a lever on the back and opening it up to reveal Batman. In order to work this feature, however, you would need both the Bruce Wayne and Batman figures, of course. The middle section was a garage with moulded rock features and a large swing garage door to give access for the Batmobile. But there was also a side entrance door for Batman and Robin to gain access to the garage by foot. This section was fairly basic and didn't have any other special features. The third section is Arctic World, 
which was another extremely well moulded and detailed section. This section featured a collapsing platform that when activated by a button on the side, dropped the figure standing on the platform into a large chemical container underneath. This container was attached to the wall when not in use and could be detached when used as a trap for Batman's unexpected foes. On the reverse side, or inside of the Wayne Manor section, the skylight windows in the roof could be dropped down or opened pressing a button. There was also an anti-gravity plate that Batman could be strapped onto and when released it would flip over holding Batman upside down from the roof like his namesake Bats. The reverse of the garage section resembled a study with the entrance door featuring a grandfather clock that opened doubling up as a secret door. There was also a zip line that attached to the top of this section and to the top of the main entrance to Wayne's Manor, allowing Batman to slide down the zip line and kick in the front door to surprise any intruders. This playset showed off Kenner's ability to make and produce highly detailed, entertaining and fun playset to accompany their action figures that were very flexible and could be retooled and painted to be used in a multitude of lines and variations. In fact, this proved to be so versatile and popular that it has been reproduced six to seven times in different variations over numerous lines of Batman figures from both Kenner and Hasbro. Mint in the box, the Batman Command Center sells for between $122 to a high price of $612. Loose, the Batman Command Center sells for a low price of around $15 and a high price of $70. Please note that the Loose playset can sell for extremely low prices or very high prices depending on their condition and whether all the accessories and features are available. Some are only good to be bought as spare parts and these would be the ones at the lower end of the spectrum. When buying, please ensure you make sure all the features and accessories are available and in working condition, especially if you're paying premium prices. Also, if you're buying mint in the box playset, ensure that they are still sealed and have not been opened, used or tampered with. Please note that the prices mentioned in this video are for informational purposes only and are not an offer or solicitation to buy any of these figures. Make sure to check out all my other Batman videos on the playlist here. Don't forget to download your free Batman action figure collector's guide here. Smash that like button. Click on the bell icon to be informed of all my future videos. And subscribe below. Actionfigureresource.com Yesterday's toys, today's treasures.